So we continue with verse 15. <clears throat> oh, blooming lotus eyed girl, Rade. when my eyes directly saw your pond, Radakum, which is filled with sweet water. And lotus flowers <coughs> surrounded by blissfully humming bees. Then I really got the desire to taste the nectar of your service. <coughs> <laughs> the water that fills Radakund and Shamakund. Sweet and filled with many colorful <coughs> lotus flowers. It's not actually water. <coughs> it is the splendid <coughs> spiritual erotic flavor of Radha and Madhava's pastimes. <coughs> These things can only be seen with spiritual eyes that are anointed with the salve of love. Materialistic people cannot see it as it is. In Antar Das, internal consciousness, we practice Lila Maya Bhakti, which is devotion that is filled with the transcendental pastimes. <laughs> So, yesterday in the morning, we said a little bit about this, so Baba, and now we can a little bit repeat, so it's some kind of introduction for the next part of commentary, and we can see that to see Radha Kunda as it is, not with materialistic <coughs> eyes, requires mercy. And we should see Radha Kunda with spiritual eyes. But because we cannot see still, some of us, like we cannot see the real form of Radha Kunda. Acharyas are trying to open our eyes through their words. And they're explaining <coughs> what's really going on there. So that we can use this practice of Antara Seva Lilamai, yeah. inner meditation on Lila, according to their words. We don't see, but because they see, they are revealing it and giving us chance to practice by absorption in their seeing. So this is the process of Raghavan. <clears throat> absorption in their seeing. Otherwise, what we will know about Radha if they don't describe us? 
Mm. We will just come on the lake of Radha Kunda, <coughs> streets, <laughs> different gates, and see what we can see. But behind this is actually completely another level, another Radha Kund, another lake, lake full of love, pure love. And all pastimes which are going there in that Sara lake, full of love, are giving pleasure to Krishna, but also giving a pleasure to Radhika to give him a pleasure. So many pastimes are described in Radha and because we are very fortunate souls, we can listen what's really going on in Radha. And through the words of our charyas, we can slowly understand and slowly accept that this lake <coughs> is the source of all love. Which is not different from Shrimatera who is the source of love. Mm. How is possible? The lake is the source of love, like the same, like the same person, Radhika, who is the source of love. Whatever comes in the contact with Shrimatera Dharani becomes Mahabharata. It's not the liquid, it's not ordinary water. It's liquid Mahabharata. Madanake Mahabharata. Actually, the most... <coughs> the pinnacle actually, of Mahabharata. Pure, pure, pure love. So for that, we need transcendental vision. We need spiritual eyes, we need spiritual mind also, spiritual intelligence and spiritual senses to feel it so that we can enter in Radha even in this body. When I say even in this body, I don't think in that moment, in this moment that entering Radha Kunda is only bathing in Radha Kunda. Now we have opportunity to listen and drink with our ears to So this kind of vision we require the most. Because this kind of vision we will grow in Croatia, in Japan, in Germany, in Norway, everywhere. This kind of vision is not limited. Like Suniti just said yesterday, Radha Kunda is not a geographical point, place, and you can find it in, on the Google. No, the best Google is in our heart. Google cannot find what is deeply carved, impressed in our Mm. So, these beautiful words we should appreciate because Acharyas are opening their heart and through their heart they are opening their vision. And when we are connected with them, transcendental vision is flowing slowly <coughs> by the mercy of Acharyas, by the mercy of Radharani, by the mercy of Radha Kunda, are flowing and infusing our hearts. Unity yesterday was talking how this infusion is going on by reading the <laughs> Infusion is the most important thing if we really want to survive. <laughs> we are not so much in healthy position <laughs> because we are conditioned by our material nature. We need spiritual infusion. And for that spiritual infusion we need a proper doctor. <laughs> <laughs> guru, and we also need the proper <clears throat> nurseries who knows what they are doing. Devoted, who are in the same mood, like one, and they are helping us. 
Because when we receive the infusion, the infusion doesn't go immediately. We should wait a little bit. That infusion spreads all, all around our body. In all veins, all seals of our body. So for that, we are and patient. But we have to have a faith, shraddha, in the doctor and the nurses. And in the infusion also. Because the infusion is prim. This is the best medicine. For each soul. And only prema can give happiness to the soul. We need that. Otherwise, it's very difficult to serve without any motive. We should be happy, jolly, when we are serving. And for this happiness, we need Kripa. Not for ourselves. But to give the pleasure. And meditation or other conduct with this sara essence of love is also something what Krishna is requiring. He depends on that lake because he always wants to bath in the sara or press. Because sara changes the syllables. <coughs> Sara brings to rasa. And the more rasa is filled, Sara is more intense. So it's going like this. And Guru the many times is explaining how this Sara, this lake, the brother from the is always flowing in the shadow. Not opposite. So different devotees like different lakes. Someone likes very much because he is very attached to Krishna. Some devotees they are bathing in the boat lakes. But whoever comes in Vrindavan he wants to visit to bath in Radha And everyone is saying, did you bath in Radha Kunda? No one is asking, did you bath in Shama <laughs> It's so natural question. Did you Have you visited Radha Kunda? Yes, yes, of course. No, I'm sorry, this year I couldn't. No. And no one is remembering even about Shama Kunda. Why? Because it's so easy to remember the love. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why everyone is talking about Radha Kunda, which is not different from Radhika. So it means that the soul, each soul, requires this pure love to be infused in all his And using this body, materialistic body, we can practice antara seva, inner seva, inner seva, with spiritual body, spiritual mind, spiritual energies, and practice how to always be absorbed in lila in different pastimes which are going on. So I just shortly make some summarizing from yesterday <laughs> so that we can continue nice. later on. Yes, please. So, so um, you are saying that uh, uh, Radha Kund is the source of all universe and source of also Krishna's pleasure. So, source of is the most important place in the universe, we can say, huh? And uh, mm, also that uh, this infusion, this vision of uh, who, who can see, really, Radha Kund is giving the vision to us. Um, um, how it's happened? Is, is it that... Uh, uh, by uh, see by uh, hearing 
uh, we develop also the spiritual intelligence. Our intelligence becomes spiritual intelligence, spiritual vision. This is some mystic process, so it's very interesting how uh, it's happened. Uh, it's come to me also one verse of um, Paramam Vishnu Param. This is uh, one of the uh, verses who describe that the saintly person, they are our eyes. So in the same way that there is the so sun, mm. it's coming in the morning. But without sun, even if we have the eyes, they are blind. We cannot see anything in the dark. So in the same way, by their eyes, we can see the spiritual world. Uh, saintly person are our eyes. And in the moment when we are reading, this is this is for me very mystically, myst mystical. It, it is everything is mystical. But it is, uh, how is possible that it's happened? But it is nice to see that it's happened. Mm. Yes. How it's happening? Through the listening. So the listening is the most important thing, even more than reading. If we just read the books, we cannot go deeply in the, in the words of Acharyas. Always some doubts will appear. Why is he talking like this? What's happened? I don't understand this sentence. Why he used this word and that word? Always mind will be very happy. But if we are open with open heart, we are listening, rasic devotees, then we can understand what is written here. And sometimes it's written actually that the book is not enough. We need living association. A living association with Rasik Divo to bring us to this uh, position that we can listen to his words. And through his words, this is not ordinary sound, like my sound, my words. This is not ordinary sound. This sound is going through his heart, and this is infusion in our heart. The sound is infusion if we are open in full heart to properly listen, not in one ear and just go out in the other ear. Just in one, both ears, drinking with the both ears, and allowing that these words, sweet kata we say, it, or sweet words, come in our heart. Then it's proper properly from the proper source. But if we don't know how to listen, if we don't have a taste for this subject, then listening is superficial. Mm. And it's very, it, it doesn't make any Socrates impressions. Impressions. impressions in our heart. So, to properly receive the mercy, Kripa, we need to open our ears and heart to properly listen. And this Shravana is the first, Suniti yesterday was uh, <coughs> reading about Prema Bhakti Chandrika. So, this listening is the first process in practice also. To start devotion, to continue devotion, and then devotee reach the perfection. He is more eager to listen. This is the mystery. Again, again, I want to listen the same thing, but never is the same because I'm drinking, and with this desire, I can go deep in the words and syllables. Not only the words, but the syllables of the of Acharyas. Because then I understand this is powerful mantra. <laughs> and there is no difference between Maha Mantra, Diksha Mantra, and all mantras. I understand this is the powerful mantra which is infusing my well-being. 
、my soul. My nourishing. All life is a mantra. <laughs> oh, there is no difference between lila and mantra. <laughs> because what is the use of mantra if we are not meditating on lila? <laughs> and when we are meditating on the pastimes which are going on, the mantra becomes sweeter. Because I start to understand. Each syllable of mantra, what does it mean?、Mm-hmm. So, for that, and this is infusion, and for that, we need t a n a That this infusion completely s p r e a d all around, s p i r i t u a l i z e our existence. So, listening is the door and key for everything. Without listening, what will I think?、Mm-hmm. If I don't listen to pastimes of life, what will I think? But if I listen, I like it, and then I remember. Just in normal life, I listen about your life that you lived so long in India. Then I think about that. Wow. She was a photographer. She's making photography. She was living in India. So I'm thinking about you and your life. And what is your life? It's a pastime. Your pastime. <laughs> It's very simple. It's really very, very simple when we put in on the ground. <coughs> Not so everyone is thinking it's so high. No, it's on the ground, and from the ground you will be. No, no, I'm not talking about it. Because this is, this is the normal thing. No, just two kinds of thinking is coming to me when I listen in the association of the world like this. One is that、uh, oh, why, why I cannot bring to everyone, why everyone cannot feel this sweet、uh, sentiment, this sweet juice. <coughs> But we, we, it, it is the real things that we are feeling that now. And another is also just to go deep inside and to, to understand more, more, more. And、uh, there is always. Some kind of little fighting between these things, but in the end, I understand that I must go deeper and forget everything to be able also to s o m e t h i n g Because this kind, why I cannot always go deep, why I cannot be absorbed always, because I have different other desires. The answer is very simple. And I don't, enough, I don't have enough thirst. So we need to listen with the thirst, with the greed. And we need association of those who already have a thirst. Then I can see, oh, all these beautiful persons, they have a greed. I don't have so much greed. I have to be closer with them because they will infuse me with their greed. And for that, also, we need the time. And listening is the most effective and most important process for them. Not seeing, first listening, and through the ears, we can see that. You see now? We are listening the words of Raghunath, of Tulas. We are listening. And immediately on the screen of our eye, the mind, or spiritual eyes, all these beautiful scenes appear spontaneously. We don't have to make endeavor. Endeavor is just to sit here and not to sleep. This is only endeavor. I feel also <coughs> the importance of receptive movement. 
そこにいる But I observed Gudi, how he is with this situation. He was like, no, oh, listen. No, 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 but listen. And then he was always, when the doubts come back, he was doing like this, in, you know, with his hand. And then finally, it was like screaming. の前で終わりなんだかの。ちょっとね、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
when about the jumping mind so <coughs> valuable to receive and to live in the presence and to live in the feelings of positivity and all of this and that will make me able to receive <coughs> and the infusion will be working so this is the that is the process and it works also if we are you know very eager it works for me it works also in the zoom because i can receive from other devotees their feelings their faith and their enthusiasm so that is the um for me that is the miracle of listening in a receiving mood and uh, that is to observe also within myself how much am I able to receive how much is it peaceful and often times listening has not the power because the mind is constantly judging or again giving its own commentary but that is also not so uh, advisable And that's why Gurudev loves this poem, this poem so much, where he says, I am the boss now, not the monkey mind. I am the soul. I want to receive. I want to be in the presence. That is something what Gurudev always calls our daily homework. But to do that, to observe my own uh, thoughts and to be, become detached from the monkey mind monkey mind but and giving it what it's proper place and uh, receive the higher vibrations vibration from those my brothers and sisters my good who are uh, obviously inspiring me by their feelings sharing their feelings then i feel that my the pond of my heart becomes so and receive it I just want to say actually that in this poem there is also one expression I don't want your antiques antiques I don't want to collect all stuffs I don't want to collect the stuffs things from the past because I want to live in the present and we can see that so much energy we are spending for thinking about the past and talking about the past even devotees so much energy we are talking how it was 30 years ago. <laughs> Who cares about that? What will change my life? And we are, we are able to speak two hours, three hours. Do you, do you remember this? Do you know this? Uh, have you been there? This, uh, and present is just flowing behind us. Mm. Or in front of us. Mm. So, why I'm talking this? Because this is also our Lila. Mm-hmm. Everyone is attached to the Lila. Should we be attached with the bodily <coughs> Lila or with the spiritual Lila? Because we all, mind always has to be in some Lila. The mind wants to. Because he is a monkey. <laughs> Do you remember how we met? 25 years ago. Do you know this person that you know, he is our own friend? And we are talking and talking and talking. Remembering what? Lila, practically, but not realistically. Mm-hmm. And we are spending so much energy, time. And can you imagine that these two hours of speaking about past, we were thinking about real Lila. And this is absorption. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If we wa- don't want to think on spiritual lila, we will think on our lila. 
Because Mike has to be absorbed in Lila. Mike wants to be absorbed. Yeah, and he wants. This is his nature. It must be different. Yeah, but we, we should be aware of it and always consciously see and then we are coming to one very important point controlling the tamak then controlling the tamak why should I speak about the past why should I speak about all these people which are even not alive anymore Materialistic persons are doing the same thing. You remember how it was in our primary school? Who cares? This is not the same person at all. <laughs> but the mind is working like this. Because he is not filled up with reality. So we should observe our mind, our tongue, to control them. Vacho Vega, Manasa Vega, Jiva Vega. Vacho Vega, what I'm talking, what I'm thinking, Manasa, and what is on my tongue, and what I'm eating, but actually what I'm speaking. Because this tongue always wants to be very active. And he cannot be active in Lilakata, but he should be active in Karmikata, materialistic. <laughs> this is the point. <laughs> this is our choice. The other day you said we have a choice where would we want to pour our energy. Yes, look, look at how much energy I am spending to speak about my past time, devotional time. It's not important later, but the devotional time. When I have been, when I have been, when I did that and you did that, and then, what is the use of this? We are not living in the past. We, we, we are in the present. We are living still in the past. So in that way we are collecting in our mind and heart and ticks. Which are stinking. Dusty. Dusty. And then we are polishing this. To look so nice. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> but... <laughs> Please continue commenting. Let me listen to some English words. <laughs> Materialistic people <laughs> cannot see it as it is. <laughs> In Antardas, <laughs> internal consciousness, we practice Lila Maya Bhakti. Devotion that is filled with transcendental pastimes. The syllables Ra Sa stand for the sweet, splendid love. Of the divine couple Radha and Krishna. And when these syllables are reversed, we get the word Sara or Link. This secret makes devotees very happy. Therefore, the devotees reveal that Sara, like, by bathing in that rasa, and by Krishna's grace, they become blessed. <coughs> By attaining a love for Krishna <coughs> that is equal to that of Shri Radha. 
、It's not easy to understand. It's not easy to understand. This word. It's not easy to understand. 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 So, Baba is explaining here this rasa in Sara. And by Krishna's grace, person attains what he said. A person attains a love for Krishna that is equal to that of Sri Radha's. Yeah, by Krishna's mercy. <clears throat> also, Person attains his love. He wants to bring the soul to his love. Her love. His love. Not her love. His love. And who is that? Who is his love? Her. So he is drowning, he is diving in this sara. And he is receiving the love, all love of the lake of love, the source of love. And when he sees that the devotee is eager to attain his love, to really understand him, it means to really understand Krishna, it means that we know. What he likes. Whom he likes. Then he is giving the mercy and say, okay, approach to my love. To my love. So this is the circle which we are going. In the beginning, we are known only for the Supreme Personality of God. And then we accept, okay. His name, most beautiful, most sweet name and form, is a Krishna. Then devotees say, okay, we should please Krishna. This is devotional service. Please Krishna. Okay. But how to please him? If I don't know what he wants. And what can I offer to Krishna? If he has everything? Nothing. Only if I know his heart, I can please him. Then he is very openly is saying his confidential thoughts and feelings. My heart is always hankering and thirsty to be with Radharani, to bathe in this lake of love, in this sun. This is my desire. Do you want to please me? Yes, I want to please you. Then approach to my love. It's so logical. It's not Shastric, Sanskrit, arguments, logic, philosophy, or that. If you want to please me, please approach to that person to whom I am striving. I am longing for my beloved, my love. And devotee who is an unfortunate, who has really good fortune, he said, okay, by your mercy, I want to become Maid servant of your love. And then I don't want to change my position. I want to be fixed like a shadow of your love. For me, searching is fixed. I want to be this small, little, young girl. Which is always like a shadow is following your love. And I will be infused by her love. How? Because her maidservants, my Guru Manja, will infuse me with that love. 
、インフーズしてくれるかですね。そうマンチャレンジをして、などあの、らしいのかな。It doesn't require any speculation. なので、その、その、クリスナ with his own words is saying, I am always longing for my love. I always longing to be in the association of my love. And then I am completely situated. <laughs> Because my love, my radical, can fulfill all my desires. And I, she inspires me that I reciprocate to her. Because when Radhika is inspires Krishna, it's not like other gopis and sakis. They're inspiring him to enjoy. And he is giving some reciprocation. But when he is with Radhika, his desire to reciprocate to her is increasing, 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 unlimited. So she is giving, she, he is taking, but also he wants to give to her. His manger is like a shadow. Are witnessing this. And there is no more joy for maid servants that to see these two lovers completely met out of love to each other. How can we say this is natural position to be? Would she matter Radhika, who is always giving the pleasure, always giving the pleasure. Gopali always giving the pleasure, and Gopal is always trying to satisfy her, even if they are kids. They, they want always to be together, isn't it? Because they exchange love. Small Gopal is Sara. She wants, according to her, age, according to her <coughs> uh, age, yes, to satisfy the desires of Gopal. And they are uns they cannot separate. So this is my dear good brother, and he. When you speak, Baya, I spent the last two weeks observing my Baya Gopal and his children. This child innocence only wanting to be with father and also mother. But not caring about anything else. I just want to be with you. We spoke the other day, I think it was Mahababa, Tina Dayal, Mahababa, that said the one thing that impresses her most about Hanuman is his childlike innocence. He doesn't do something to show off. He's doing something totally innocent and he wants to to please his Ram just like Chaitanya and Radhika and Govinda all they want to do is please my Baya Gopal and my sister my Didi is Mira and that's the only thing that's in, in their head and again I, if we can take this childlike attitude with our Ishta day, what can go wrong? We can only get closer and closer to Ishta day. We have all experienced doing something for Gurudev. And we're thinking, oh, it's, it's minimal. That's so little. But Gurudev is having so much pleasure. So much pleasure in this. And maybe some other people, for example, when 
A child is making a drawing. A two-year-old, a three-year-old child is making a drawing, making some colors for the parent. With this childlike innocence, this drawing is absolutely gorgeous. The father is so pleased, so pleased about receiving this, this gift. And maybe someone else who doesn't know this relationship, they're looking at it. Come on, it's not that nice. Come on, it's just scribbling on the paper. But the father understands what, how much love is invested in this picture. Or in this just... Oh, two days ago. Or maybe it was yesterday. I'm not sure. I lose time here. <laughs> Your son Chaitanya came out of nowhere and, and, and gave me this such a loving hug. I almost cried. It was so wonderful. I was not expecting it. <coughs> but this is the love. This is the childlike love, I think. Yeah, I, I see my Hanumanji also for his Ram. I see your kids. I see all of you also pleasing Gurudev in so many nice ways. Even just a little tiny nice way, just minimal. And Gurudev is so, showing so much appreciation. <coughs> this is the chief navigator. He knows that this love is what it's all about. Anyway, Jai Shri Ram. <laughs> when Krishna becomes eager <laughs> to see Radha, Radha and all of his endeavors fail. <clears throat> he takes shelter of Radha-kund. <laughs> At that moment, <laughs> he gets the audience of Radha <laughs> on the strength of the kun. <laughs> He is taking the shelter of love. If he cannot see the Radhika, embrace Radhika, immediately and very submissively, he is taking the shelter of love. This love will only be my protection and my survival. And because he is so eager to take a shelter of love, because he has a faith in his love, desire for his love, Radhika appears. So Krishna is teaching us to take the shelter of pure love. When we are talking about love, we are always talking about pure love. But if we don't have a faith in love, <coughs> then it's a problem. <laughs> we want to take a shelter of money, house, good job, and this is okay, but this is not the shelter. A real shelter for the soul is to take real shelter under the umbrella protection of pure love. And Krishna, by his own example, is taking shelter of his love. And he is coming in Radha to intensify his meditation on Shemateratika. And Radha Kunda, because it's embodiment of Mahabhava, with the four, he immediately remembers all their pastimes, villas in Radha Kunda. And it helps him to soothe the heart. 
I'm sitting here on the bank of Radha Kunda, and immediately all pastimes are appearing in front of me. And when all pastimes which I remember appear in my mind and heart, because there is no difference between mind and heart, spirits of mind and heart, his longing for Radharani becomes more intense. And because of his more intense longing, Radhika can feel it. And she cannot resist them to appear him. To take the shelter of love, we cannot use the same comparison with our experiences in material life. No, because we have so many what to say, disappointments in love. <clears throat> and we cannot compare it. The soul needs to be under the protection of love. Otherwise, we will never be satisfied. Because the love is only natural. Think, feeling, protection, shelter, Food. Love is really food for the soul. Nourishing the soul. Giving more, more life in the soul. Otherwise we will be in the void. Why? It's so boring to be in the void. Emptiness. Impersonal. And then suffering starts. But if we really take the shelter of Shimati Radhika and her love and the love of her maidservants, so we should accept it. Accept, accept that umbrella. This chapter. And how it starts to take the shelter? Taking the shelter under the umbrella of Gurudev. Then, under his umbrella, he will brought us to Shimatera. To the final ultimate. Never leave the umbrella <coughs> and position under umbrella, the shelter of umbrella, of Guru and Guru Mantra, who will brought us to the ultimate final goal, under the umbrella, because Gurudev's umbrella is the Radhika's umbrella. It's not his own. I invented my umbrella. No, Radhika gave him umbrella and he is giving us that umbrella to go under this umbrella to take the shelter. What is umbrella? Protection from everything else what is not pure Protection for everything else, what is not pure. The rain, umbrella, is. we are using umbrella to protect ourselves, usually, from the rain. Is it? Or, or the sun, yeah, heat. But under this protection of pure love, under this umbrella of pure love, is such a huge rain of mercy, of love. <laughs> so I am I, under the <laughs> umbrella of pure love, and then waterfall, rain, a huge rain is falling on myself. And then I'm completely protected. <laughs> and sometimes when we feel that rain of Kripa, we run away. No, I want to be dry. 
Wow, such a beautiful decision. Come back under this <laughs> Can love be calculated? <laughs> Never. Never. This is materialistic way mm. of love, loving. Love has to be a haituki, without any cause, without any reason, selfless. Mm. This is the pure love. And only this kind of love can bring satisfaction to the soul. Yayatma supersede. Give all happiness, all satisfaction to my Atma. How? By taking shelter of love and also taking shelter of serving the love. Active role. This is very nice analogy. And what is devotee? Devotee is a person who wants to learn from everything, everyone. And this duck situation <laughs> with small ducks remembers devotee in the same manner I have to take the shelter. Or I want to be in the bank. This is my choice. Should I stay with the shelter or I want to make a shelter on myself by independent nature, independent activities, I want to be in the bank. So this is our choice. But this acharyas are giving us also explanation. If you really want to be independent, then you will be conditioned. <laughs> we are striving for independence, and a result of this independence that we are depend on material nature. We are becoming conditioned. And this is foolishness. This is calculated. This is calculated. I want to be independent and result of my independence that I became prisoner. The result will be opposite. The result will be opposite. So this is because I'm not under the real shelter. And immediately, I am not in my normal, real position. I am living in the prison. And I think that I am free. When Krishna becomes eager to see Radha, then all his endeavors fail. He takes shelter of Radha At that moment, he gets the audience of Radha on the strength of the Kun. In the same way, Radha also takes shelter of Shamakun and thus attains the company of Sri Krishna. Amazing lotus flowers, lilies, and a lot of flowers. <coughs> <coughs> are 
are covering the sweet water of the Kun, surrounded by buzzing bees that become intoxicated by their fragrance. Can I just interrupt? How is that? One question. How is that if we can learn from Krishna how to take the shelter to Radha? And we cannot learn from Radha how to take the shelter in Krishna. <laughs> We have to learn from both of them. Because Krishna is taking the shelter of his love. And Radhika, she, she is taking shelter of Shanti because she wants to give it. Her giving mood is her shelter. Okay. Mm -hmm. She is living to give. Mm. Love is existing. Only purpose of existence of love is always to give, to give, to give, not to take. Shelter of love is giving. Yes. Shelter of love, to take the shelter of love, it means that we should learn how to give. Mm. This is shelter also. Shelter is seva. Seva means giving. And I'm taking chatrahi, taking the shelter of my seva. Because through this seva, I'm expressing my love, I'm active, I'm serving my love. In that way, I'm existing. So, it means to take complete shelter. それは完全に保護されているという状態なんです。このこうを受けているということです。この保護を受けているということです。はい、ありがとうございます。ちょっと質問がありますね。ナリラで。マクシュです。ラフィス。エクスチェンジ。アイドゥノコガンですね。And it's like I stop the love flow. So sometimes I think to receive love, to take it, is also a way to love. Because the other one wants to give me his love and he's happy when I receive and I am happy to see me. It's like you told the story with the innocent child who was drawing a picture which was not beautiful but it did. It draw this picture with full heart, and then the parents say, "Oh, thank you, thank you." I receive this love, this love from you, and I think this is an act of love also. How does this fits together? How can this work? When you want one side you say love is only giving, on the other hand side. It should be on a spiritual level, not on a material level. On a material level, you can love me. And I can say, yes, that's very nice, but I don't love you. As much as you love me. This is normal. Sometimes it can happen. You love me, I also love you. I love you and you also love me. But it can happen. But this is materialistic vision, materialistic conception and materialistic life. But in the spiritual sense, in the relationship with the uh, devotee and his Ishtadeva, this is all, there is always exchange of love, never interruption, never doubts are coming, because the doubts are result of material existence, not spiritual Love is the exchange of flow between soul or devotee and his ishtadeva. It's no question actually. 
の相手を喜ぶのでそこに対して質問や疑いというのは起きません。In spiritual existence, spiritual relationship, there is no expectation. Reciprocation and relation, loving relationship simultaneously is going from one side to another. We know this short story is. When Radhika is approaching to Krishna, and he is very eager to meet her. And in one moment, when he sees her or hears the, the sound of her ankle bells, he becomes more sweeter and beautiful. Then she appears. Then, when he sees her, he becomes even more beautiful. And when he is more beautiful, Radhika becomes more beautiful and more sweet. Because in this exchange of love, the sweetness, beauty, relishing of love is always increasing unlimitedly, unlimitedly, unlimitedly. And this is spiritual love. In materialistic club, I'm looking at you 20 hours, and after that, I want to be alone. <laughs> It's enough. I need the distance for myself, for my independence. This is materialistic experiences at materialistic club. But in spirit of love, I, I cannot be, I cannot satisfy my desire. Never. I won't always want to be with you. And you want to be with me. This is spiritual. And it's also possible in spiritual relationship with spiritual body and Ishtadev. In this case, So when Radhika meets Manjaris, Manjaris are blooming even more of their own sweetness and beauty. And when Radhika sees them, how they are blooming because they are in her association, she is more beautiful and more sweet. Mm. It's always increasing. That's the reason why it's said this is unlimited and bottomless. How would you say? Yeah. Bottomless. bottomless. Ocean. Of loving exchange. There is no limit. There is no deepness. Hmm? No limit to the deepness. No limit to the deepness. No limit to the... All around. There is no bends. Shores. Yeah. So, this is the... We should understand the difference between spiritual life, love, and material. <laughs> and Acharyas are trying to help us in this understanding. And they say material life is like an iron. And spiritual life is like a gold. But there is a hope. If we put iron in the fire of love, then iron is starting to burn. And slowly, slowly, then iron becomes the same like a fire and start to melt because it's infused with the qualities of the fire, with the qualities. So conditioned soul like me needs that fire to become fire, to melt, to be infused with all qualities of the fire. I need to be infused. 
And this fire is burning all impurities, all impurities. And the iron becomes actually like a gold, pure gold. And we should, it's not just the words, which are sounds nice, poetic, or something like that. We should now apply in our life. プレクティスです。And in everyone, see your beloved. This is not philosophy. We don't need philosophy for this kind of kata. We don't even have to know to read, to write. <laughs> It is said, even foolish child. By the mercy, can My Baya gave example. His kids are not foolish at all. No. <laughs> Why they are not foolish? If they try to be like grown-ups, they then become foolish. But they have natural, childish nature. <laughs> Their spontaneous <coughs> expression of their love. Uncalculated. Uncalculated. Without any hidden motives. <coughs> I love you. And that's it. Mm. <laughs>